All right, guys, it's Charlie Tango 1994 back with another YouTube video. Like most people, I first got into radio because of the CB radio in the early 80s, and I only got back into the hobby about five years ago. And as well as owning a different number of transceivers, I've also owned a number of cheap scanners that allow you to listen to a lot of other frequencies. The advent of technology has heralded a lot of change, radio notwithstanding, and with the advent of software defined radio, or SDR, this gives you access to a lot of the bands from your laptop. There are a range of different SDR devices out there, but I decided to go for the RTL SDR, as in my research, this proved to be one of the most popular choices, and since it's supplied with its own little antenna, I decided to invest the £25 it cost to get hold of one. The RTL SDR is popular because it does give you access to the FM bands below 24 MHz, without the need for an up converter and can cover from 500 kilohertz up to 1766 MHz. As well as the device, you also get this antenna mount and two adjustable antennas, which can be tuned to the frequencies that you would be most interested in, or using an adapter, can be connected to a larger antenna tuned to a specific band. I've not used SDR before, so the first job is to find and install the software we're going to need to use it. So the first step is to go to Google and do a search for RTL SDR. The first link here is the rtlsdr.com website, so let's hit that link. Next, we can click on Software, then RTL SDR Software. The software that was suggested to me is HD SDR, so let's scroll down and find the official installation instructions found here. This then opens a PDF with more links, and we need to go to the Zandig website to download the right drivers we need for this device. Whilst that is downloading, let's go back to the PDF and download both the HDSDR software as well as the DLL needed to connect the software to the device. Once we've downloaded everything we need, let's start the installation process. First off, Let's plug the device in and let Windows Update download and install the Windows driver for it. Unfortunately, the Windows driver isn't what we need for the HDSDR software, so our next step is to run the Zadig software, downloaded earlier, to install the correct one. Once Zadig is running, select all devices from the drop-down, then look for Bulk Interface 0, then replace the driver. Then go back to Bulk Interface 1 and replace the driver for that also. Now that's done, we need to unplug the device from the laptop, then reinsert it to collect the new drivers. Next, we need to install the HDSDR software. But when it's finished installing, we won't run the software just yet. The next bit is a little bit fiddly, but we need the DLL that we downloaded earlier navigate to the HDSDR software folder on the laptop and then copy the DLL file we just got into the program directory. And with that complete, we can now launch the software. Our next step is to install the antenna so that we're able to receive signals. And now we can open the SDR software and see what we can find. This is the first time that I've ever used the software, so I really don't know much about it yet. I know you can change frequency by dragging, and also by mouse clicking on the numbers. We have modes over here, and that's about as much as I know for now. Switching up to the local radio stations, you can see I'm getting these signals. I'm going to go away and learn more about this software, and I'll be back with another SDI YouTube video soon. 73s.